Hi everyone, I'm Patrick Brown and welcome to the new monthly project. This is number 26 and the theme for this month was Wild West. I was really looking forward to this theme because I'm a really big fan of Red Dead Redemption 2. I've played countless hours of that game. It's such an immersive game, so much detail. And since we're on the theme of Wild West art, here is a recent piece of fan art of mine for Red Dead Redemption 2. I tried to make like a mock poster of the game. Anyway, let's check out all of the submissions from my patrons. Each month I pick three submissions to critique, and I'd like to congratulate Paul, Cy, and Virgilio. I reckon these pieces are awesome, and I can't wait to dive into them separately one by one, uh, give a bit of feedback. Alright, let's have a look at some Wild West art. So first up is Aurelio, and then we've got Carl and Levi. These are really cool. Let's have a closer look at Aurelio's work. I hope I've said your name right. I'm sorry if I haven't. This is really cool. This is like a cross between modern day and western. Almost a bit of a cyborg look there in the face. That's cool. I love the attitude in that piece. Really cool. All right, let's have a look at Carl's work. The detailing in this is really nice. You've got a bit of a, uh, like that crosshatch kind of sketchy effect. And that works really well for the, uh, the western theme, I think. Gives off kind of a grungy, gritty vibe. Yeah, that's really cool. I like that. Nice work. And next up is Levi. I really like the colours in this piece. That looks really nice. That backdrop as well is just perfect. Looks good. Is this one of your own creations? I'm just looking at the the moon logos there and, uh, and the way he's got that kind of bandana around his eyes. Unless it's a piece of fan art from a character that I don't know yet, but he looks really cool. Nice creation there. I really like them colours. And next up, we've got Renee, and you've done a Django Unchained poster, but this is for number two, like an unmade movie, more of a fan poster. So this is really cool for uh, the idea of a sequel to this. And this looks absolutely gorgeous. This is so cool. Love what you've done there, the whole setup. It's just great. These poses, very dramatic. That is amazing. I love what you've done there. Really nice setup. Well done, Renee. All right, next up is Cedric. I can't wait to get into this one. This is an absolutely huge piece here, Cedric. I really like what you've done here. I mean, have a look at that detail. It's just endless. The amount of work that you've put into this is insane. And the, uh, the style is just absolutely beautiful. Looks like you've really taken your time. The details through the train are just absolutely gorgeous. This is beautiful. I especially love that it tells a bit of a story as well. It's like a bit of a comic. And you've got your main character up here. That style just works so well for this Western theme. This guy looks great. I really love the attitude in that pose there as well. Yeah, this is great. I like that uh, that texture that you've got over the entire piece as well. That washed over kind of paper texture. This is phenomenal. Really, really beautiful work there, Cedric. Next up is Skylar Jones. And you've done some Red Dead Redemption 2 fan art here. It's really nice to see Arthur Morgan in the mix. I like the pose with the gun over the shoulder. He looks really cool, really badass. The colours are looking good. He's really popping. I really like that. Nice and vibrant. Yeah, nice work there, Skylar. And next up is Olivier. And you've got this beautiful piece here. Look at those colours. This is just popping. This is beautiful. I'll zoom in a little bit. Is this uh, Clint Eastwood? Because I'm seeing a bit of a likeness there. And I really like that. The pose is awesome. I love how he's hanging off the side of that horse there. And I especially love how the, the smoke or the dust is like spinning, like curling up around. Makes for a really nice composition. And the way you've done that sun and the backdrop, this is just, yeah, beautiful work. Well done there. I love it. And that is actually all of the submissions that we've got this month. So let's get straight into the critiques. All right, let's start with Paul. This is a really good piece, Paul. I love the whole setup. I absolutely love the colors as well. This is just screaming Western. It's just those colors, everything about it. Absolutely perfect. I love it. Your style is spot on. I really like your line work. Everything that you're doing there is just absolutely phenomenal. I especially love the way you do hands as well. The details are just looking really great. So well done. If I was going to change anything, it would just be with this guy in the back here. The guy in the foreground is perfect. There's, I don't think there's any changes there. I've also cut him out, so he's uh, completely, like, I can use him now any way we want. If you have a look at the perspective that you've got here, which I love, by the way, and I really love that dramatic angle there. You've really nailed that. You can see your horizon line right there. Um, so this dramatic kind of perspective, 
I just feel like the measurements are kind of off with this guy just slightly. It's almost like he's just a little too large. So if we base the measurements off this guy here, there's his waist, uh, shoulders and the top of his head. So with this perspective going down this way, we kind of need to have the waist of the other guy lower and down there somewhere. And the shoulders of this guy, you know, you can see the, you can see what I'm kind of getting at here. So for the other guy, we kind of need him to be very, a bit more similar to that. It means he's going to be further away and much smaller. And I think it might actually work quite well if he's a little further away anyway, because, uh, you know, you want to have a bit of distance between them if they're going to face off in a shootout. I also feel like he can probably tilt that way just a little more too. I'd probably actually size this guy up as well. So size him right up. I could even use a free transform and slightly just bring up the perspective or the foreshortening of these legs and make the top half just a tiny bit smaller. I want to see how that kind of looks. So we'll press OK and that's before and after. I just feel like that might help with this dramatic angle. And I feel like we need to kind of get this guy and add, do the same thing with that perspective. So before and after, you can see I just feel like we need to play up on the perspective more because we are at such a low angle, basically at his knees, that kind of height. So we really need to make sure it's kind of like we're looking up. And there we go. So I've just adjusted that hand so it's coming down a little bit more. I just felt like the original um, kind of poking out a little bit. It's, well, that's actually fine. Like, it's not too bad there, but I felt like it'd be a bit more natural to come down and closer to the gun, like it's ready to really grab it. It makes it a little bit more threatening as well. But that's only a minor thing. Uh, and I also did it just to move away from his hand. And it's only minor, but I made a slight change with the belt. Uh, I just really wanted that to be more straight rather than um, curled downward uh, because of the perspective. His hips would be more like this. So if I put a cylinder here, that the contouring will start to go you know more dramatic as it goes that way so when it got to his belt i wanted that curve to be around that way whereas originally it kind of swoops the opposite way but anyway the only other thing i would do is sample that orange and just like lighten that just behind this guy's hand just a little bit to help separate him from the main guy in the back there okay so let's do a quick comparison so before i started it was like this and now we've got that so I'm just basically trying to add more dimension by pushing this guy back and making this guy bigger. Uh, I feel like we've got a, a nice balance now as well. So if we were going by the rule of thirds, you've got your guy here in this interesting spot and a guy down here in this interesting spot. So that's how the rule of thirds kind of work. You want to make sure that, you know, this top corner has got something interesting and this, this it's basically actually more accurate if you aim for these spots here, these corners. I'll try and highlight them a bit better, that one and that one. Uh, and that's kind of what we've got now. So we've aimed for those areas. You've got your main guy and the, the other guy. And that works really well now with the rule of thirds. Whereas the original, uh, the, this guy was down too low, this guy's up too high. And yeah, the, the sizing's just a bit off. But yeah, anyway, there you go. Uh, I hope that helps, Paul. And uh, yeah, really great work. I love what you've done. I've got no changes on the colors. I love the colors. Love your outlines. Characters look awesome themselves. These poses are great. So well done. Awesome work. And I hope, hope that helps. All right, next up is Sai. And as always, you've submitted more than one submission. You've got three in total. So check out these ones here. I love this Clint Eastwood one. He looks awesome. That likeness is really good too. Really good caricature there. I love that. you got such a cool style. I love the colouring as well. He's really popping out there. It's nice. And you've also got Yul Brine here from Magnificent 7. And this is a great caricature. It looks just like him. I love the way you've rendered this as well. That clothing looks great. Your ink work's really standing out too. So I really like that. especially love the cell shaded look you've got through these hands here. That's just working really nicely. So top-notch work on those ones. I'm going to be critiquing this one today. This is from Django Unchained, one of my fave movies. I love it. This is a great likeness here of Jamie Foxx. Looks awesome. And it's a really good action scene overall. I really love this. All the bullets flying and yeah, that's awesome. Now, if I was going to change anything about this scene, I'd probably just change maybe the angle slightly just to be a little bit more dramatic. Uh, so I'm kind of lowering the angle just a little bit more looking up and I'd like to have... Maybe the ground tilted just to add drama. And then uh, we'll try and frame it a little bit with some rocks or a cliff that goes up the side a little bit more. And uh, and that'll be a distant mountain on the left. 
a little bit further back in the distance and maybe we'll just focus on some clouds in the sky and uh, and that means that we're going to need to change the horse's angle just slightly as well so I'm just going to try and get yours and pull that back a little bit with the perspective so I've done a free transform I'm just grabbing that top node there holding control and then I'm just changing that angle this is in Photoshop by the way and then uh, maybe I'll just press enter on that and then control T again and I'll right click and press warp and I'll just pull the head up uh, a little taller as well I think that would help a lot um, and you can see how the angles kind of changing a little bit more now uh, and I'm trying to get this to look a little more dramatic and I feel like the rest could probably be done with liquify so I'll just adjust that now and I just want to take the size of the front of the horse down and maybe the uh, the back of the horse needs to go up a little bit more in size and then I'll just pull that back I also feel like your horse probably just needs to have a little bit more room in the back of the head there and then we'll just need some more brow room here so you see that so I'll bring that out a little bit more of a brow for that and that eyebrow there can go lower since we're at a lower angle the other eye can go like up more there we go so you can see the adjustments that I've just made there we go and I've just done another liquify just another one there I feel like the head probably need to go a little higher now I just need to change just Django just a little bit so I might tilt him a little bit and just place him a bit better on the horse and I'd be pretty happy to actually uh, hide that hand in the back there so that can tuck behind the mane a little bit more there we go so I'm pretty happy with that layout now we go so I'm just painting in the background now just trying to just try and get a nice setup going really nice blue sky there pretty much the same as you've got I'm just I'm sampling off yours because I really like those colors and then as we get to the clouds I'll really just kind of put those white kind of clouds in there there we go so that's the background kind of set up now um, just roughly kind of thrown it in it's only rough but you get the idea so again we'll just do a quick comparison there uh, something like that and I just want to show you another little trick with the the horse because I like what you've done and I think the horse looks really good when working with uh, something that's got really dark values in it, like the tone of the, the horse's fur there, and it's like a really dark brown. Um, so when working with colors that dark, it's really good to actually start packing in some of the black outlines uh, in shading. So pure black. And, and I'm just going to go through and start doing some, uh, some shading in some certain parts. And I feel like this will help bring some contrast to the, the horse a little bit more and also help it hold it together a little bit more and I'd also love to see some more of the sketchy details that you've got through you've, you've already done a fair bit of it which is good see these lines here I really like that kind of detailing I feel like we could really amp that up so um, especially with fur let's play around with that cross hatching technique so when you get to some areas on the horse especially up here uh, up on the side here let's just say there's this a big muscle through here and I'm going to start shading in with cross hatching just some nice uh, you know techniques like this and then spread it out as it gets up and that's going to help tell me that there's a nice big you know muscle in there around the neck so I'll really pack that in a bit there and then that shoulder can kind of come over and help break that away a little bit more so kind of like that and then under the neck again, and I'd love to see some more kind of sketchy lines coming up. Just going quite bold with it. And um, I feel like that'll really help bring all this out a lot stronger. Even uh, as we get up to Django, I'd love to see a little bit more of this incorporated into him as well. Just, just a bit bolder and a bit thicker. See how um, just adding some more black lines, like making that contrast really pop. I feel like that's going to work really well for Django here. Um, also on the gun, needs a lot more darker lines because I do like how you're colorizing your lines, but I feel like um, some areas might just need to be a little darker, mainly where the shadows would be strongest, uh, facial hair, around the eyes. I'm just kind of framing it all a little bit more. There we go, something like that with the gun, I reckon. Uh, a little bit more contrast in there. Bringing it all together a lot more clearer, a little bit more clarity. I, I really, really feel like we need just some more of this black 
and there we go i feel like that's going to work a lot nicer um and if you if you don't want to go that drastic you can always go on that same outlines layer go over here and take it down to luminosity and then um you can either just go hue saturation and lighten that because when you lighten it's going to match the color underneath you see so if you didn't want to go that drastic like me you can do that just even if you just want an extra like four percent like plus four so it's not completely black that's totally fine if you still want to go half and half and yeah that's about it and i think yeah that's phenomenal i think what you've done absolutely amazing uh obviously this background's really rough but i just really wanted to kind of point out uh, a bit more of a dramatic angle could really benefit your work uh, in this piece sorry i mean so the original is is there I'm not quite sure about the glare there i don't know maybe i'd probably try and avoid that uh to i just found it a little confusing at first i first thought it might be a sun but um yeah it, it just made me wonder a little bit and we kind of want to avoid that so i'd probably keep it a little more simple um and yeah i don't know something like that maybe and yeah like i mentioned the main thing was probably just a bit more clarity in the line work i mean your line work's amazing and i know you already all had it all in there i just think it was light and just a little bit too much clearer and darker maybe i think it would make it more sharper everything will come across a lot nicer so yeah i hope that helps si i love your work um you're an absolute legend and uh yeah keep up the great work all right last up we've got virgilio and you've done this piece here this is from overwatch and you've got a few of these cowboy characters from that game and I really like this setup. I love what you've got here. I love the composition. I just think the attitude in these guys are really cool. And I like the way that everything's framed with the smoke uh, and all of that. So let's get into your critique um, and see what we can do. All right, so I've just made a few slight adjustments here. As you can see, so before it was that and now you can just see the kind of changes I've made slightly. So I just thought that his head was um, too small compared to his body. So I size that up. Same with her, I've uh, sized her head up uh, a little bit. It wasn't too bad, it was nearly there. Uh, but her head was just a little small. And I've also arched the, the back a little more um, and just kind of brought out the chest. So poked her chest out a little bit more to work with the pose that she's got. So I feel like she needs to kind of have that nice arch, you know, and then that's the contouring of the body there. So it kind of comes around the contouring of the body. Um, so yeah, and then you'll have the uh, the chest up through here, poking up, and then yeah, you got your shoulder there and pops it down. So I really wanted to make sure that we uh, we got that right. Whereas in the original, I just felt like it was all a little bit too. I uh, feel like the shoulders up too high, the necks down too low. I feel like the guy's body kind of needs to come in uh, just a bit more. I think I feel like just a little bit more, a little bit of a relief there. It's just that hip slightly on the guy there. One thing that I highly recommend with your work, uh, one thing that stands out to me most is probably your line work. It just needs to be a lot clearer. So I'm just going through now and I'm just trying to refine it a little bit. Just, um, I just want to show you the difference in like clarity and just, just how much of an effect that can have. I think if you really implement this into your, into your artwork, uh, it'll just be a massive game changer for you because you have such an incredible style. You've got a lot of energy into your, in your work, and I love that. You remind me a lot of myself when I started off. Um, you know, I really tried to focus a lot on energy and those, those, the attitude in poses and almost like an animated feel to them. But yeah, so all you really need is to have, you know, your line work a lot clearer. So here we are, I've just finished up the female character. Um, you know, it's not completely finished, like the gun, is not complete or anything like that but you get an idea so I'll just show you the original um, so you can see before I just feel like uh, and actually I will point out as well there's I think the one main thing that is making this all look a little little too messy is probably just the the lighting you've got this edge lighting that's coming over the top of everything uh, but I can I can tell that it's gone over your outlines I think you're actually doing your lighting above your outlines uh, which is not a good way to go. Um, personally, I like to, you know, do my edge lighting underneath the outlines. That'll be layered underneath the outline so that they tuck under. Um, I feel like it just gets a little bit too messy here. And normally we need a little bit more 
sharpness I think everything's just a little bit too chunky a bit too rounded so I would love to see this cleaned up a little bit so we can go a lot thinner in places with outlines like super thin so what I recommend with you I feel like is you see what you've done with your face I like the line work in that face that's that's working really well so what you whatever you did in the face if you did that over the entire body don't worry about the thick outlines just do it uh, over the whole body just nice and thin uh, thin lines thin details and then at the end let's just say that you made a flat color of everything so like a silhouette like this just say if you get the fill and take that down to zero then double click on that silhouette layer and then press stroke um, and make sure it's set to outside see this is a, a lot cleaner way of doing your bold outlines if you still wanted to do that but I recommend taking them down a bit so uh, down to two maybe so you can press OK on that you could even flatten that if you wanted to and this way you're still getting your style it's just coming a lot uh, across a lot clearer so like I said just imagine if you did thin outlines over your entire character and don't worry about any of that thickness that you're, you're used to this kind of stuff here do thin outlines over everything and then do that technique I just showed you then by adding an outline around the outside and it should come across a lot neater and a lot cleaner and you'll still get that thickness that you like so I think that'll work really well for you and now she's like yeah, a lot more held together so another thing that uh, I would love to do so I'm just gonna hide that white mask that I've got I feel like the the coloring that you're doing as well is just a little too dark um, and it's blending with your black outlines nearly see the the difference between this and this is is too close so we need to get that value uh, up a bit more so what I'm gonna do is just lighten up your character like this um, and just see how that looks so I'll lighten it up a fair bit and then I'll just get the hue saturation to bring in a bit more of that brown tone uh, and match you know the original character because I believe this is your character here that you're trying to get so you can see that nice lighter brown there so that's kind of the same tone now whereas before it was about that so you see how it's lightening it up is going to show off your line work more and uh, I just think that'll work really nice for you so I'd, I'd recommend lightening up uh, your darker colors a little more and then add some saturation so yeah if you could focus on your line work and then everything will be really good so same with this guy so those proportions there see those proportions if you follow that you'll be fine as well so you can see the comparison there I've just changed him up a bit apart from that Virgilio I think uh, yeah you're doing really well and I, I can't wait to see what you do next you're awesome, thanks so much. All right, that is it for this monthly project. I hope you enjoyed the video. The theme for next month is zombies. I'm gonna do a zombie theme. So if you'd like to jump on board the uh, monthly project train, check out my Patreon at uh, patreon.com slash Patrick Brown. And it'll be just in time for Halloween, this next project, so I'm really looking forward to it. All right, everyone, thank you for watching. Have a good one, see you later.